Now, more and more brands are investing in the value of retaining you as a customer. They're using loyalty or rewards programs to attract you to engage more with their product or service than you normally would. If you are a South African consumer, then you've probably got one of these rewards cards in your wallet or purse. There are more than 100 loyalty programs offered by retailers, pharmacies, medical aids and banks, just to name a few. And more than 15 million consumers are reported to have signed up for at least one of these. And they're all gunning for your loyalty. The brands get information about their consumers and their behavior, um, how they spend their money, where they spend their money, um, uh, how often they spend their money, uh, what do they buy. So they collect information for, uh, about the customer. And also what they do get is uh, a loyal customer base in that the benefits will attract them to do business with that brand rather than another one. Some brands are willing to add this customer retention tool to their operational budget, investing in valuable information like your behavioral patterns, how much coffee you buy in a week and how many times you fill up your tank. That way they sell you their products the way you like it, meaning you spend more. Loyalty programs supposedly offer a lot of rewards for the money you and I spend on products and services, but are we getting as much bang for our buck as the brands are? For instance, some coffee shops require you to buy 10 cups of coffee and as part of their loyalty program, the 11th one will be free. Other pitfalls are the hidden costs carried by such reward schemes. While the prospect of freebies can be enticing, you end up not knowing what you're really benefiting. For example, information on consumers need to be updated very regularly. Uh, people change, their lifestyles change, and the loyalty programs need to stay in touch with that. Um, if I get a voucher for disposable nappies, it's not going to help me because I, my children, I used it 15 years ago, that type of thing. Um, people's needs change all the time. Um, I think the engagement with the your loyalty card holders is not always as um, used as, you know, it's not um, implemented as well as it should be. These loyalty programs, like any other transaction between company and customer, are regulated. You and I are protected by the Section 35 of the Consumer Protection Act. It keeps a close eye on the rewards and loyalty programs and the National Consumer Commission should investigate any complaints you may have. Consumers are warned though, SARS has not claimed its stake in these transactions yet. So should the taxmen start demanding their share of the pie, you could end up footing the bill. The advice though would be to hold on to just one or two that suits your everyday needs. Muto Kwaripe, Johannesburg. Well, there's no denying the value offered by these customer loyalty programs, but do they actually work? Do you actually get something back? Well, joining me in studio to discuss this is Lauren Barber, who is lead consultant for customer strategy at Principa. Lauren, thanks so much for your time this evening. Before this interview, I looked through my purse and I realized how many of these cards <laughs> I actually have and 90% of them I never, ever use. I hear it all the time, absolutely. Why do we have them? Basically, the premise of a loyalty program is around allowing businesses to engage more effectively with you as a consumer. Um, and increasingly, it's become almost like a, a requirement of business that consumers are becoming more um, conditioned to yeah. having loyalty programs, and therefore they expect it, certainly within certain industries. If you look at banking, within grocery, almost everyone's doing it. The guys that aren't doing it are lagging behind. Yeah. As a consumer, you expect that it is your right to get something for nothing. The problem is that businesses don't necessarily always deliver on the promise of a loyalty program. Mm, and we're going to t talk a little bit about that and what recourse a consumer has. Mm -hmm. But I just wonder um, how these programs are designed. I mean, we are all, as consumers, have different behaviors and we go yeah. through lifestyle changes. And there's certain things you were offering me last year that aren't going to work for me Absolutely. in 2015. Are, are businesses and brands adjusting to the, the changes in the consumer? 
The ones that are being successful really are. You basically get a rather large group of businesses that think that by having a sticker program or a plastic card, somehow magically it's going to create loyalty with customers. Yeah. And what happens is they throw a lot of money and resource into a black hole and they still lose customers hand over foot anyway and can't quite understand why. Mm. There's another large and growing group of businesses that have actually learned that the true value of a loyalty program is in the fact that number one, it helps you to get very powerful data on customer behavior. Mm. So understanding how customers are behaving, what's driving those behaviors, and what they're going to do in future, which means as a business, it actually puts you in a position of power to profitably and sustainably manage the growth of your business through how customers behave. Okay. It also means that it gives you a platform for engaging with customers, to give them communication that's relevant, that's informative, and basically the value of loyalty programs for businesses is around the data and the engagement. Yeah. As a consumer, it's around really just engage with me in a way that I want to be engaged with. Give me a better offering that isn't necessarily linked to price but if you treat me like an individual give me what I want when I want it mm. then I will be loyal to you financially emotionally and even attitudinally in those cases where they don't deliver <laughs> what they promise just give us some, some examples of what would happen in a case well We've actually seen examples in America where loyalty programs have actually been cancelled. Businesses have had to extract themselves from an existing loyalty program. Very awkward position to be in. Mm. And effectively, it just has to do with the fact that a business in that instance would generally believe that having a loyalty program is in and of itself an entity that is going to somehow make customers want to support them. There isn't any link between those loyalty programs and the brand image and how the business really approaches business. Mm. What happens is that you then have a disconnect. There isn't really any kind of link between what customers are experiencing through the loyalty program and the obvious expectations that customers would have. If I'm sharing my data with you, yeah. I expect you to use that data to understand me better. Give me a more relevant service treat me fairly, treat me personally, give me better customer service, pull those levers of what's important to me. Businesses that don't do that are not going to succeed and they're going to land up in a situation where they're actually achieving the one thing they're trying to avoid, which is that they chase customers away because their engagement is so poor. All customers complain. Do we complain a lot? About no, us? customers don't complain Why? enough. Um, it's a phenomenon that we haven't really been able to understand, but we do know that there's a very small percentage of customers that will ever bother to complain. The large percentage of customers would rather just walk away. Mm. What that means is, again, it's a black hole for businesses. They don't actually understand what's causing the customer churn. So that's why the only way that they can actually address that, make sure that they are engaging in a more relevant way, is to understand their customers. Now, very much, as you said, customers will actually grow and move through a journey um, mm. as they mature. So the better Custom, the better the business understands the customer segments and understands the customer's journey through those segments, the better they can do a really good job of making sure that they have relevant, engaging interactions with customers throughout the customer's life cycle yeah. to grow customer lifetime value. Is there some sort of recourse? I mean, are we protected in the law if you are made a promise through a loyalty program and it's not delivered? What can a consumer do? There are um, a number of, um, of recourses. CPA, of course, um, has got a number of, of um, elements. Um, I think ultimately, though, the average consumer would not actually turn to any legal recourse. Yeah. They would choose to walk away. And for me, that is the most powerful way to vote against a business that is actually not delivering on their promise and is not really using a loyalty program for the fundamental purpose of it being a platform to engage better with you and to deliver a fair and consistent service to you. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Lauren Barber is a lead consultant for customer strategy at Principa.